Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. And today we're here for our Quick Tip Thursday session. And today's session is all about masking complex objects in just a few minutes. Trying to mask complicated objects or subjects like trees and veils usually becomes super tedious and time consuming and I know for me very frustrating. So in this session we're going to be covering um, how some of the tools within Topaz Remask make these more difficult uh, masks and selections not only easier but better quality because there are all sorts of tools uh, within other programs that can quickly get more complicated objects out of a simple background like this but if you take a close look at those edges you'll see a lot of contamination of color and Remask really resolves that very quickly with a couple tools. So we'll be checking that out today. So let's go ahead and take this image of the windmill into Remask. I have a little bit different process than I would if it was a more simple subject. And there is a reason for that because it's very difficult to come into all of these little intricate areas and try to determine the edges for all of that. So we have tools that you're able to let the program really work for you. The Remask is based on a TriMap technology, red for cut, green for cube, and blue for compute. And that blue for compute is really important when it comes to um, these more difficult subjects. But when you have a lot of negative space like this, I actually like to start off with the compute color instead of the green color. So I'm just going to come down here to my reset all and reset this to the blue compute. And now I can use some more selective brushes to just eliminate the blue color that I want to get rid of in the background and then let the program know the colors that I want to keep and then compute my original mask. But starting off with this blue is really important when you use the single color selection tools to actually make your selections because the technology in Remask requires that you have not only a cut or a keep, but you have to have the blue as well. But if you don't want to sit there and paint that blue compute line, over, and then we get that blue color out of the way and we can just work with our keep and cut colors at this point. And I'm going to start off with my cut tool. And so it's this little brush underneath the single color selection. I'm going to take my color range up to, let's say, about 40. The color range determines the range of uh, tone on each side of the color that you select that it will remove or keep from your selection. So the higher the color range, the more, uh, let's say I select a blue color, the more tone on either side of that blue it will select. So it's a little gives you a little bit more leeway to select more tonalities. If your color range is really low, it's very specific on the color that you choose. I'm also going to take my brush size all the way up. I'm in my single color selection cut brush, and I'm just going to click on the sky itself. When I click on the sky, my little color dropper chooses the color, and now I see that in my swatch over here to the left. I can just start painting with that red brush, and I'm just going to paint over the sky itself and I'm not going to care about going over the windmill because I know the windmill doesn't have any blue in it. So I'm just going to select several of the blues and just quickly scroll over the whole image here or the whole sky. Not really concerning myself with having to be exact and that's the fun part here. I have a couple little white areas that I'm going to work on here in the clouds. I'm going to be careful not to go over the edges of this windmill over here as with these clouds because I know I have some bright spots. So let's go ahead and take that brush size down and we'll just hit the middle of that cloud. And that works for me. Now I'm going to tell the program what I want to keep. And I am going to go ahead and start off with my basic brush. And I'm just going to kind of go along the edges of the actual cutout I'm going to make. So anything with really broad edges that I know I'm going to keep and it's solid, I'm just going to do this little line. And now I can fill in the bottom portion with this green. And I have this compute line, basically, that tells the program, here's where I need you to think. Well, there's a lot of negative space happening and there's a lot of um, extra work we're asking the program to, to do. So we need to tell it even more information about what we want it to keep. So I'm going to use my single color selection keep brush and I'm just going to take my color range, leave it up high again and I'm going to start selecting some of the colors of inside the windmill on the metal itself as well as some of the trees and I'm just going to paint very quickly over this blue compute area. It's 
selecting the colors that are in my foreground. Over here on the trees, I'm selecting some of these shadows and some of the greens. Just going over the whole image. I don't have to be super exact. If I still see some um, of that blue color after I'm done doing this, that's okay. We want the program to do the majority of the work for us, so we're just making the easier selections right now to try to help it out as much as possible, but we don't want to do all the work for it because it tends to do a better job than we could, <laughs> or at least than I can. So let's see here. We're almost done here. I want to get a couple more. Here we go. A little bit more of that tree going. And maybe just a touch of that bright spot there. That's good. And let's just see what this does. So I'm pretty happy here. Now I'm going to make my initial compute mask. So my initial compute mask comes up with this, which is pretty great considering we have all of these negative spaces in the tree and the windmill itself. So now I'm going to take a look at my quad view and really see what's going on. Let's say I want to add a sunset-y type background to this image, or maybe I want to add a bright white background. It's always good to actually check um, or change your background color to what you think you're going to be um, putting the background color putting the image on, because that, that way you can tell which areas you really need to focus on as far as decontaminating those edges and things like that. So I have this on kind of a peachy background, which works for me for this particular image. And I, as I scroll in and take a look at certain things, I notice that there's still some uh, contaminated edges here. I see a little bit of the color bleed happening with the blue along the uh, very small edges of the tree. Also over here on the left, I see some issues with some um, contamination of color. So I'm just going to quickly turn on some of my refinement tools that are going to help with this and make Green Mask really stand out from other masking tools. My recovery slider, I'm just going to take up a touch, and then I'm going to turn the high quality on. If I'm working with trees or hair or something that has very intricate edges, I just automatically turn the high quality on. The high quality takes extra time when processing. It goes through this one-time only processing stage that you're looking at right now on your screen. But once you go through it, it's totally worth it, especially if you have these, um, these really difficult edges that remask without that, um, without that slider or technology or other programs that don't have that, you'll keep these decontaminated or contaminated edges, and it, it starts to make it very difficult to blend. But now keep an eye over here on the right-hand side, the lower right. This is the keep mode, and this tells you what we're actually going to be keeping from our image. As I take my recovery slider up, you'll see that majority of those very intricate edges, it almost looks like it filled out the tree with a little bit more body, and it, but what it's doing is reevaluating those edges and trying to determine what's supposed to be the foreground color and what's supposed to be the background color. And it makes that determination and just brings the foreground color forward and removes those background colors. And it just has a great effect overall on these more difficult edges. So you definitely want to know about that when working with these more complicated subjects. As we scroll around and take a look at some other issues, you can quickly come in and just use some of our tools over here on the left-hand side. I highly recommend the basic blue compute brush after you've done your initial um, selections because you can really um, retell the program what to do. So I'm just going to, actually for this one, I'll use the basic red. I'll we'll color, color over the areas that have some issues. And then with the blue along this edge, I'll just make a quick blue uh, stroke, and you can see the program thought for me and said, okay, I'll, I'll deal with that and got that out of the way. Now, this didn't keep all of these very intricate um, wires that are going through the windmill, but that's not really important to me in this image, and so if you're okay with that, you can just erase those pretty quickly by using certain tools, such as the compute. It will go ahead and reprocess that area and just try to 
determine what you want to keep and what you want to get out. So there we go, that works. Pretty happy there. I could take a few more minutes and refine some of these edges, but since this is a Quick Tip Thursday, let me just go ahead and get rid of the really obvious issues. Now, this issue up here on this particular um, area, you can see has a bit of transparency in those um, in solid areas. So we definitely need to work on that. And I would use my single color selection keep brush and just choose a couple of those colors and go over on the edges. So now we have a more solid selection there. So everything's looking pretty good to me. If there's any area that continues to have some color contamination edges like some of these trees still have a little bit of haze of blue. You can always use your basic tool, um, compute brush, it's the blue brush. And once it goes into this initial mask mode and you're in your refinement masking workflow, it will continue to process every time you do a little selection. And we, base, we call it our, our magic brush because it continues to just do some great work. And if you just go along these edges and do a couple clicks that where you see are seeing some issues or you're missing a branch or something like that, uh, you can really pull that back in quite quickly with this blue tool. So when you're happy, you can just press OK and get that back into your host program. So now we have our cutout of a pretty complicated subject and if I hadn't have been uh, speaking and showing you what to do, this would have only taken a couple minutes for me. And so now I have the option of maybe moving this and putting it on a different background, like a sunset. There are some uh, definite issues as far as the light. We have a bright daylight here with uh, a darker sunset background. So if at that point you want to maybe take your image, and I've already done this, into something like lens effects and just add a tone to that image, you can start that whole blending process. This still looks like a cutout to me, and I would still have some work to do. This just gives you an idea of kind of the process that you can take with these uh, more complicated subjects. So I hope that gives you the knowledge of what tools are best to use when you're dealing with things like hair, fur, trees, anything that has a lot of negative space like this. With a more simple background like we had today, it's actually quite an easy process where you will walk away with much more refined edges than you would using another process. All right, everybody, thank you again for joining me for Quick Tip Thursday. Thank you, Darcy, for answering questions, and we will be talking to you soon. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.